With a stroke of his pen, President Woodrow Wilson created the Reserve Officers Training Corps, or ROTC, when he signed the National Defense Act of 1916. But the story of ROTC started as far back as 1819 when Captain Alden Partridge established a program of military instruction known as the American Literary, Scientific, and Military Academy, which later became Norwich University in Northfield, Vermont. At the Academy, Partridge originated a novel system of education that combined civilian and military studies in order to produce enlightened and useful citizen soldiers. The Vermont Institution served as a model for several military academies and colleges founded by Partridge or his students at locations throughout the United States. Just over 40 schools were up and running when President Wilson put pen to paper, but most schools that came online with the Defense Act were unable to have any significant impact on World War I. With a fresh influx of federal support after the war, the program grew to encompass 220 colleges and universities by 1940. The mobilization of the U.S. Army for World War II gave ROTC its first real test. From August 1940 to December 1941, 80,000 organized Reserve Corps officers, the vast majority of whom were ROTC graduates, answered the call to active duty. 1948 marked a watershed year in the history of collegiate military education as the buildup of Cold War tensions moved Congress to pass the Selective Service Act. This legislation encouraged tens of thousands of students to enroll in ROTC to enable them to fulfill their military obligation by serving as officers. Also that year saw a study by then Assistant Secretary of Army Gordon Gray help propel ROTC to become a key source of officers in the United States Army. In 1964, the ROTC Vitalization Act authorized government financial assistance in the form of college scholarships, which are now used as an incentive to attract talented young people to the program. A number of efforts occurred in the 1970s to spur recruiting and attract students of a higher quality to the program. The Army raised subsistence allowances and scholarships and authorized new training programs such as airborne and air assault schools the Early Commissioning Program for Military Junior Colleges, and the Simultaneous Membership Program. The entire ROTC program was open to women in the fall of 1973. Within two years, women accounted for more than 29% of enrollment. In the early 1980s, U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command Commander General William R. Richardson helped develop a new model for ROTC by adapting many of the new ideas being used in ROTC's 4th Region. On May 2, 1986, Cadet Command was established at Fort Monroe, Virginia, with Major General Robert E. Wagner as its commander. Cadet Command provided policy, direction, curriculum development, instructor training, and scholarship administration for future leaders. Since the command's establishment, cadet training assumed a new intensity and rigor. Commanders also emphasized life skills as a vital ingredient to the Army ROTC Military Science Corps curriculum of tactical training, individual military skills, and squad tactics. Over the last 25 years, Cadet Command has become the largest officer-producing organization in the American military, responsible for commissioning more than 70% of the officers assessed into the Army each year. Currently, there are more than 36,000 Army ROTC cadets enrolled in more than 250 host universities and over 1,000 partnership colleges and universities nationwide, as well as in Guam and Puerto Rico. This is the next generation of America's finest leaders. They are one of the best led, the best trained, and the best equipped corps of men and women who will use their professional training in management, discipline, and leadership as a solid foundation for a successful military or civilian career. The challenges of today's global environment require our junior leaders to be ready upon graduation to deploy and lead our soldiers on the battlefield. In recent years, cultural awareness has blossomed into a valuable part of the curriculum and includes studies of the regional geography of Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. In 2010, Cadet Command officially launched its Cultural Understanding and Language Proficiency Program. More than 1,600 Army ROTC cadets 
has spent part of their summers fanned out around the globe performing various humanitarian missions and training alongside their host country's military in Asia, South America, and Europe. Today, Army ROTC is one of the largest scholarship awarding organizations in the world. Approximately $250 million in Army ROTC scholarships will be awarded to more than 15,000 recipients in the coming year. All scholarships are up to full tuition at two, three, or four years. They also include an annual book allowance of up to $1,200 and a monthly stipend worth up to $500. Upon college graduation, newly commissioned Army lieutenants step into an immediate leadership position. Scores of Army senior leaders, corporate and government executives can attest to the fact that the training they received in college through Army ROTC provided a strong foundation for their success in their military and civilian careers. Prominent Army ROTC alumni include Colin Powell, former U.S. Secretary of State and former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Samuel Alito Jr., Supreme Court Justice. Sam Walton, founder of Walmart. Lenny Wilkins, Basketball Hall of Famer is both player and coach. Earl Graves Sr., Chairman and Publisher of Black Enterprise Magazine. Nancy Curry, Space Shuttle Astronaut. And Lou Holtz, Legendary Football Coach, Sports Analyst and Motivational Speaker. ROTC was a defining experience in my life. When I entered college at the City College of New York in Harlem in 1954, I wasn't sure what I was going to do in life. Started out in engineering, but that really wasn't my thing. But it was in the fall of that year, after I'd been at City College for about six months, that I discovered ROTC. And I thought, this looks pretty good. I was a kid who needed direction. I was a kid who needed discipline. I was a kid who needed some order in my life. And so I joined ROTC, and I joined the Pershing Rifles, which is a fraternity within ROTC. And as a result of ROTC, I found a purpose in life, but more importantly, I found some, something that I love, something that I love doing, and that was being an officer, being a cadet first, and that became my goal, to become an officer in the United States Army. But it was more than that, it gave me an opportunity to serve. It gave me the opportunity to learn a lot about my country, to learn a lot about the history of my country, to learn discipline and order. So I'm a great believer in ROTC, both senior and junior ROTC. It gave me a start in life and gave me the ability to rise according to my ability, according to my willingness to work hard. All of those things I learned in ROTC and I applied them for the rest of my life and career. Congratulations to ROTC for all it's doing. Congratulations to Cadet Command for its 25 years of service and what it's gonna be doing in the future. In addition to training the next generation of Army leaders, Army Cadet Command oversees a model citizenship program the Army Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. Junior ROTC is in 1,731 high schools nationwide and in select Department of Defense schools overseas. The program serves more than 320,000 students, the majority of them in demographically disadvantaged school districts. The value of our Junior ROTC program is immense. This program focuses on strengthening the youth of this nation and produces measurable results. Junior ROTC cadets have a graduation rate nearly 20% higher than their peers, higher grade point averages and attendance records and lower incidences of disciplinary problems. We are teaching them to be civically engaged, productive citizens with an emphasis on personal responsibility and service to their communities. Today, we live in a complex time where the need for strong global leadership is at an all-time high. Freedom is not free. It is earned by each new generation of Americans as it must be. It is now that we need leaders from all walks of life to step in service to protect and defend the values and principles that make this nation great. Truly, it is the future leaders of America who can make our army strong as we forge onward with the cadet command legacy of training to lead.